yeah. all the Burmese pythons. Um, that yeah. is a, another huge area. We have so many different invasives in Florida. Mm. And I would say that the, the feral cat and the Burmese python are probably the two absolute worst that we have in yeah. the state in terms of displacing other species um, yeah. that are native. Um, the the Burmese pythons, I mean, you you filmed a, an alligator oh, eating, yeah. eating the one. And I, that footage no, is absolutely incredible, man. And They're crazy. It was crazy. I almost wish I got there like a couple hours when it was still happening. Because mm -hmm. I caught them when the gator had killed it, and I was just looking at it, going, "Oh, this would have been amazing to see at a at a uh, in its natural place, in like a uh, if the snake was alive." My oh, gosh, I've never seen a snake that big before. It was crazy. The, the the Burmese python thing I find quite tragic, because it's such a beautiful animal, mm -hmm. and from what I understand, it's declining in its in its home turf or at least it's stabilizing or i'm not sure what's happening with its population but in florida they're exploding and yeah. there is that but that's not a good thing because they're they're decimating the local prey items there yeah and they're eating people's dogs and they're eating alligators and they just it's an it's a perfect example of an apex predator where it shouldn't belong yeah, and that's how those in uh, there's a difference between an introduced species and an invasive species. An introduced okay. species, for for those that that are listening that aren't aware, an introduced species is a uh, an animal that gets brought in that is not native. They're both non-native mm -hmm. species. Um, they get brought in, but they're not displacing any of the native species that are found in that environment. Um, yeah. I've filmed the Reese's macaques that are in Florida. Those are uh, a monkey species that are found uh, mm -hmm. throughout Southeast Asia and India. Um, they're not displacing any native species, except for yeah. maybe a few birds that they're competing for food with. Mm -hmm. um, but they're not, they're not actively displacing anything. They're not occupying an environmental niche that yeah. should be occupied by anything else in that environment Ver versus uh, an invasive species like the Burmese python that is absolutely taking over the top line of the food chain in yeah. South Florida where they're typically found. Um, there were, uh, I was talking to some of the people that worked at the Flamingo campground um, mm -hmm. down in the Everglades. And one of them told me, he said, yep. He's like, I've been here for 22 years. He goes, I've been working here. He goes, I'll probably die here. Um, he yeah. goes, I absolutely love this place and this is where I want to be. But he said the effect that the pythons are having, he said, it used to be that the campground was covered in raccoons, uh, that oh, there God, were yeah. so many raccoons there that you, you had to keep your food in your cars and everything. Mm. They would approach people's campfires. Like they got really comfortable with people. Yeah. And I said, really? I haven't seen a single raccoon the two years that I've been coming here. And he oh. said, gee, I wonder why. And it's because <laughs> of those pythons. Because they're all they're... in the pythons. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they are uh, uh, python fertilizer now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and and it... that's just another way that, that, that this non-native animal is, is affecting something. They will eat juvenile alligators and the endangered American crocodile that is down there. Yeah, that's, um, that's rough. Yeah, they'll eat both mm. of them, juveniles and adults and you know yeah. it'd be one thing if only the juveniles were being uh predated upon mm. uh, but whenever you can take breeding adults out of a population that is an apex predator whenever you can take the breeding adults out of the population mm. as well that's whenever it's like oh okay this is a much bigger threat than we realized yeah. because mm. now you're now your backup plan for uh revitalizing a species and, and recovering a species is now under threat they also eat birds and bird eggs as well especially yeah. whenever they're smaller um mm -hmm. and then whenever they they get bigger they uh, develop a taste for larger prey yes, and that's when yeah. you get into them uh eating uh dogs cats are typically a little more aware of their environments mm -hmm. um, they're a bit more cunning yes definitely a bit more yeah. cunning so it'd be great if the pythons uh got a taste for our feral cats and decided to go yes, after yes. them in south florida uh but unfortunately the cats are another out. example of that invasive species that um yeah. they're aware of the threat and they know how to deal with it mm. ah, it's mad isn't it i remember seeing that thing and it was just like that's uh that is a massive snake that's, a, that's this is like an animal 
which has evolved. I think it's from Far East Asia. Yeah, they're from mm. um, uh, formerly Burma, uh, which is now yeah. Myanmar. Myanmar. They're from um, so they're from this crazy place, thousands of miles away. They're brought into an ecosystem which is perfect for them, mm -hmm. and then they just go. They have at it because there's not many natural predators. There's tons of food. Yeah, yeah. they just go crazy. It's a the... stunning. Stunning animal, but not, and, not and one thing that's making it a, even worse is the fact that they are very almost exclusively being found uh, in Everglades National Park, uh, which it is illegal to hunt in. Um, there were a lot of hopes that whenever our current governor came into office, uh, yeah. that he would petition um, the the previous president and potentially the current president uh mm. for requesting um some sort of an amendment to the laws around national parks so that way yeah. they could have licensed hunters come mm. in and do their best to eliminate the burmese python population but mm. as it is currently that's not at the top of their priority list yeah. uh, they're much more focused on on saying nasty things about each other on twitter and uh, dealing with the <laughs> pandemic and, and stuff oh, like that Jesus. yeah um, saying so, nasty things to each other on twitter yeah <laughs> yeah that's, yeah absolutely it's, it's really sad and it's yeah. very frustrating for me as as an mm. environmentalist to be like really like this is all you have to do like this is yeah. what this isn't what we voted for you on regardless of which political side you're on yeah no because i know a guy i met him a couple of years back when i was in the everglades and um it's he's got like some kind of permit to hunt these pythons but i don't think he's actually hunting in the everglades like you said yes like he's hunting in the areas around it couldn't somebody make some kind of i want to say an excuse to allow X amount of people to go into the Everglades to hunt solely for these snakes because they're probably breeding there because no one's eating, like no one's going after them there. Yeah. Yeah. So, and that's why they keep leaking out into the rest of Florida. Yes. Because they're just, they're, 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 they, they're untouchable where they breed. In an ideal situation, and, and, once again, this is not, I'm not an expert on this. This is my opinion as an environmentalist and as a, a biologist. Yeah. The, the way that I see to solve the Burmese python population would be to have certain certified individuals that mm. are adept at identifying their species before they kill mm. them. Because you don't want to, you don't want hunters to come in and be like oh there's a snake over there and they end yeah. up killing something like a, an indigo snake which is a oh, recovering God, yeah. snake population mm. really beautiful really amazing yeah. snake looks nothing like a burmese python but it yeah. does it is a snake that you might find in some of yeah. the areas that python would be so it would be great if we had certain certified individuals and you had enough of them that had the time and resources uh to go yeah. in and remove these pythons mm -hmm. um i've heard the idea tossed around about having a bounty on burmese pythons with allowing um that that would be one way to kind of incentivize people to yeah. have this hypothetical certification um, mm -hmm. to go in but then you also run into the issue of what if they're just collecting or breeding burmese pythons at home and yeah. bringing the carcasses in to collect the bounties because we've had issues with like our invasive lionfish that are found mm -hmm. uh in in our coral reefs now um we've had issues in the past with people collecting bounties on them and photoshopping images or oh, uh, <laughs> having breeding populations in a tank at home and then they put them in a bucket and they take them out and they stab them with a spear and then they collect a 50 dollars bounty on each oh, lionfish man. it's it's ridiculous the, the lengths that people will go through to kind of cheat the system yeah, in that's... these ways and it, it's god i've never i've never thought of that <laughs> Yeah. that's crazy yeah of that, course that's one of the biggest issues with incentivizing it because it'd be great if everyone would just do it out of the kindness of their hearts but that's also talking about a lot of time money yeah. resources and risks to that individual because the everglades is a naturally extremely dangerous environment it's yeah. 
alligators. Incredibly crocodiles remote. and alligators. Crocodiles and alligators and the pythons. Yeah. Um, there are so many different species there, not also including all of the venomous snakes that are found in South Florida, coral snakes, water moccasins. You've got those to deal yeah. with, uh, as well as rattlesnakes. We have uh, two mm. different species of rattlesnake that are found here. Copperhead yeah. snakes, which aren't really found in South Florida too often. Um, mm -hmm. So, so there's a lot of different risks that are involved with that, but also um, the the remoteness of you might need a the boat location. to get out there, or you yeah. might need a, a an all terrain vehicle to get mm. out to a certain area, and then you've also got to march through uh, different areas of potentially protected plant life that yeah, are out there. Yeah, <laughs> you oh, know? yeah of course, <laughs> trudging um, all over the ecosystem. Yeah, so th there's yeah. so many different risks, and and I understand why a politician would look at that and say you know what i'm just gonna you know say something nasty on twitter instead <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah, yeah um, it's just easier yeah it's, it's just it's easier to stick to a complicated situation and mm -hmm. and i like to look at it from both sides of you know oh yeah, yeah we should absolutely be doing this but wait 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 what are the risks that are involved yeah. with doing this as well yeah you've got to understand those risks it's such a it's such a massive issue and i've never even looked at it like that like because i always like me and my dad always talk about these things mm -hmm. and um I, we've always been in agreement that we should just get a bunch of duck hunters or some like educate educate them about what pythons look like and then send them off into the into the reeds to go catch these things and we were like ah oh, yeah that would be perfect but everything you've just said puts a big wrench into my plan <laughs> yeah exactly because um, it makes sense like if yeah you could breed these things at home and then just collect checks oh yeah. god that's so annoying and it's also it's very annoying you, yeah you want to you I, I like to hope for the best in people i i, I mm. believe in altruism that that it does exist in, in people out yeah. there but there's also an inherent selfishness and yeah. it might not necessarily be something malicious but like if mm. you have somebody that it comes from a more impoverished background their priority is taking care of themselves and their family yeah. and if there's a way for them to do that then they're going to they're yeah, yeah. they're not doing it to to harm anyone in particular mm. but they are trying to take care of themselves yeah. or maybe help pay off uh, a college debt or yeah, to help yeah. pay off their house because things are getting so expensive here mm. in the u.s in regards to that and that is a whole nother iceberg whole, that we'll yeah. leave alone for right now. yeah i have no idea what to do with that yeah. um, <laughs> but no i get that you can't blame people for doing it but if they're gonna if they're gonna if they need to do it they're gonna do it yeah yeah, yeah. That's there, a there's story. a will there's a way and and mm. that's you know for for better or for worse that's how it yeah. is oh that's a crazy story well that's a mad story i was i've been wanting to do something with the pythons for a while i just haven't had the time money and current situations to go and do it <laughs> you're a bit far away <laughs> a bit far away yeah, <laughs> yeah. We're a bit far away but it's um oh it's such an interesting tragic story that you just want to try and have you have you heard of something called a gordian knot um i'm not i'm not entirely familiar with that no it's a um it's a story about oh, i can't remember his name alexander the great yeah mm -hmm. he conquered some town i can't really remember it and a trader had a knot tied to his trailer and it was so intricate that the guy couldn't figure out how to open it because it was so many knots, there's so much going on, where you have to take a step back and then you end up whacking it with a sword. Yeah. But it's a, like an it's an analogy for something like that. A massive problem that has so many kind of interweaving knots and ties, and uh, it's just so complicated. <laughs> yeah. and it just it just you got to really like look at it from another angle and figure out what's going on with it and how yeah. you can unweave it. Yeah, and unfortunately, the knot is made out of a, a highly predatory uh, snake. <laughs> <laughs> yes, a yeah. twenty-foot highly predatory snake. Yeah, a 